Last week, a Reagan-appointed judge went out of his way to tamp down the attempt by some Republican leaders to defend the January 6 rioters. U.S. District Judge Royce Lambert called their rhetoric preposterous, saying, quote, the court fears that such destructive, misguided rhetoric could presage further danger to the country. Judge Lambert was responding to Republicans, including Donald Trump, who described the rioters as hostages. Joining us now, former January 6th committee investigator Marcus Childress. Marcus, welcome. Um, it's, it's an interesting turn that uh, we see these individuals who everyone witnessed, you know, do what they did and intuitively know that's that right. right. <laughs> that's right. bad behavior. Right. They're insurrectionists. They're doing these things that they're now sub suddenly... Uh, not viewed that way by some in the party. You have uh, Liz Cheney, for example, uh, correcting Elise Stefanik, who's completely done a 180 uh, on this issue, uh, noting that, you know, they're no longer uh, insurrectionists, they're hostages. How does that how does that play out in terms of the work that the committee did? Um, and what do people need to know and understand firmly about why that's such a wrong approach and point of view? Right. There's this unrelenting desire to double down on the big lie. And it's, and it's becoming very mainstream from political leaders, uh, folks like the congresswoman. And we're seeing it play out in court with defendants. I mean, it wasn't unusual that when I would sit down and depose one of these rioters, they would, you know, say these same talking points that we see leaders making about, you know, it just being a, a peaceful protest or, or words to that to that effect. And the judge here is really seems annoyed and triggered mm -hmm. by, by these claims that are becoming so mainstream. But it's also important to take a step back and look at this defendant himself, right? He stormed the Capitol. He was the one that was walking around the Senate gallery. So he was one of the people that was directly uh, responsible for the members having to be evacuated and some of them having to run away into uh, safety. Uh, and, and he showed a lack of remorse. And the judge seemed to really take issue with that lack of remorse. And the most ironic part was that he was sentenced to another 60 days in jail, right? Because because of that lack of remorse. So he appealed his time and then got more time because of that lack of remorse. You know, the, the 2024 election is, what, 10 months away? Um, yeah. Donald Trump is already beginning to cast doubt on that election. If it'll be fair, um, he's talking about the weaponization of government again, even though, again, all of the thing, all of the consequences potentially Donald Trump is facing, he brought upon himself. Uh, he did this in 2016 and he did it in 2020. No one should have been surprised that um, on election night or after that election week, when Donald Trump got up there and 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 claim that he actually won and 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 didn't let go. Um, do you think folks are prepared for what potentially could happen this time? There's a pattern here that Donald Trump has established. Yeah, the pattern is exactly right. I mean, when you look at people that run for office because they care about democracy, it's a I win or I lose. It's the will of the people, mm -hmm. right? But when Donald Trump runs for office, it's a I win or I was cheated. And, and one of the first things I did when I, when I got on the January 6th committee was I went back and looked at the Stop the Steal. Like, how did it start? How did this movement begin? Mm -hmm. and it actually goes back before 2016. It goes mm -hmm. back to 2012 mm -hmm. when President Obama beat mm -hmm. Senator yep. Romney. Yep. You know, uh, Trump at that point said that President Obama must have cheated, right? That, that was how he kind of came to national prominence. We should march on Washington. Then in 2016, as you alluded to, Stop the Steal was originated, and it was during the primary, because he mm -hmm. thought he was going to lose the primary. And there's a really good quote from Senator Cruz at the time who was saying, no, people aren't stealing your votes, uh, Trump. People just aren't voting for you. Uh, but then it went back in his back pocket because he won the primary. And then fast forward to 2018, in the midterms. Again, we see voter fraud claim to this, or we'll prosecute you if you're engaging in voter fraud uh, because of the midterms and the Congress swinging back to Democrats. And then in 2020, right, we see the culmination of how that played out. Uh, if I don't win, it's because it was rigged. Right. Stop the steal. Mail-in votes are fraudulent. So this is... It's a playbook. It's not an original idea. It's something that comes up every time he's running for office. So given that it is a playbook, if you are an attorney on the Biden reelect, what type of preparations can you put in place for the possibility, the some would argue inevitability, mm -hmm. that Donald Trump will question the results of a fair and free election? So that's something that our committee and our recommendations really try to think about, right? It was taking these words seriously, making sure that members are being smart about the way they're talking about the election and the way that, that the elections are carried out, our security. Um, and, and I think you just have to really examine uh, how it played out in the courts last time, how it played out with grassroots movements in the past, uh, and, and try to take measures, right, to, to make sure that people have faith in our voting system.
system because that's the key to democracy. Well, the, that's a that's an important point. The, the for me, the, and I guess I'd be curious how you guys look at this lack of faith in a system that is one of the most secure in the in the world. Um, and how did I mean? Is it just the rhetoric of a politician, a two-bit politician? who stands up and goes, oh, well, if I lose, it's because they cheated, right. that people then go, oh, yeah, this system is, is corrupt, it's broken, when there really is no clear evidence ever that that is a consistent problem in our system to the point that every election is questionable. Because, as we know, those ballots that Donald Trump was on, that Demo uh, Republican senators, congressmen, state legislators are claiming was a stolen election. Well, dude, that means your election, your seat is questionable because that ballot, you, you just can't segregate it. So you see the breakdown in the logic. How, how, do we, how did we get here on that timeline, as you noted? It didn't start just in 16. Right. It's an element within the system. And, and what what is the germinating, germinating it's a, it's a idea? It's a moneyed element within is the system, it? right? I mean, yeah. I do think I would be curious what you yeah. found as you were investigating this about the fact that these movements do not pop up they organically. Don't. There are often people who are very interested in making sure that people are on these topics. There are and a that's the way they do it. It's coordinated, right? I think that's the point you're making. It's, it's a coordinated effort. It's not just the members that are saying this. There are, I mean, it's, it's coordinating with, with people that can give it a voice, like an Ali Alexander type. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coordinating with people who are thinking about the actual legal strategy that go behind the words. It is coordinated. Uh, but the and to that point about that coordination, I just want to say you had the former president on the trail lauding Cash Patel for right. Cash Patel being a warrior, for right. Cash Patel having carried his water. So there's there's also sort of a, 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 an ecosystem yeah, here where people are rewarded for that behavior. And the assault on the um, what, what there's a system that is in place that is to reduce fraud across the country as it relates to because it yes. is you know folks say there's no such thing as voter fraud. To be very clear, this like. Right. Point zero 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 three percent of voter fraud. It doesn't change. Okay, the, not outcome determinative exactly. in any kind of way. Exactly. Right. But there was a system that is placed that was in place that every secretary of state used, opted into, and to uh, Alicia's point about it being coordinated, yeah. there has been a a systematic dismantling of participation in that system for right. more than a decade. And right. that's important to know because that very same system that secretaries of states opted into, mm -hmm. a lot of Republican secretaries of states opted out of. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so yes. now they're crying foul mm -hmm. because they've opted out of the system that is the appropriate check on voter fraud. Right, right. But it's important, though, because the words of these leaders matter, right? That was one of my biggest takeaways from the committee, was that individuals were just saying exactly what their secretaries of state were saying, mm -hmm. what the former president was saying. I mean, I had one witness tell me, if I can't believe the words of the commander-in-chief, then who can I believe, right? And that's a powerful statement and something that we will try to reiterate in every hearing and throughout the report is that who we elect to lead our states, to lead our country, it matters because their voters are going to believe what they tell them. Mm. I just want to say thank you, Marcus, in the work of the committee, because I continue to believe that the only reason Donald Trump is facing any little bit of accountability is because of the work of the January 6th committee. Without it, he'd be walking around here, put loose and fancy free. <laughs>